Good morning, guys. Uh, just charging up detectors, getting ready to go on an adventure this morning. I received a call from a local person who not only watches the videos, but we have done a video on one of their properties in the past. Well, I guess back in the day, great grandma was doing the dishes at the kitchen sink and she threw the dishwater out the back door and her wedding ring went out with it. So I've been contacted by this person who watches my channel a little bit and uh, we've been there before on a different property. They want me to come out and take a look for grandma's ring. So let's do it. Sounds like an adventure to me. And this guy is a bit of a history buff. He knows a lot of the local stuff. So I'm going to tap his brain because he might know tons of stuff for us to look at in terms of future adventures. So a win-win. A little channel update guys. I did it. I pulled the trigger. They are having a North American stimulus sale uh, from Nocta Macro detectors and I purchased the legend. I've been on the fence all summer and what made me decide to go ahead and do it was hey they were throwing in $400 worth of extra stuff. Who couldn't use a second pulse dive pinpointer right? I'm gonna have to sell one of them to stand. I've got two. I'll have two brand new ones not even open. So <laughs> anyway I got that, a hat, a new digger, uh, the six inch coil, all kinds of stuff. And I paid less for this than I did for the Equinox. Love my Equinox, but it's a 600, not an 800. So I don't have all of the features. The Legend will have all of those features. And they just came up with a new update for the Legend machines, added 40 new features and, and uh, settings. Okay, you gotta love a company that sells a product and then comes out with a firmware update, listens to its customers and says, hey, we're gonna add this, we're gonna change this, we're gonna fix this, we're gonna try it. I'm tired of trying to find information online. How does it compare to the Knox? Uh, how does it compare with, you know, uh, coins? I can't get that information because everyone's soil is different. Everyone's areas are different than mine. The only way we're gonna know is to get out there and swing it and try it. So I bought it and it'll be coming in Stay tuned, we're gonna be trying the Knock the Legend coming up shortly. I'm not sure what, is that a bittern? This bird on the side of the road just had his wings out. He was, oh, it's a, it's a heron. A young one? Yeah, that's a young blue heron, I believe. He put his wings out like to, to stop me. <laughs> That's kind of cool. I thought it was a, an American bittern at first. Uh, you don't really see great blue herons on the road, but I guess he was looking for frogs in the ditch. All right, here we are. This is the property we're going to be looking for an old ring on today. little old farmhouse apparently this farmhouse I believe was moved here from the original farm okay so that door right there guys is where great grandma threw the uh, dishwater out with the ring and so somewhere here in front possibly uh, we've got to do this now because Doug's going to be, uh, you know, moving things around, adding dirt. And if we don't find the ring now, it's not going to get found. So let's just take a look and see what we can find. Okay, first two holes, we got some tin foil here and an old horse tack logging ring, probably. I knew they didn't really sound like a ring, but we're going to just dig anything interesting because you never know what we're going to find. Okay, 20 minutes in, we're getting a whole collection of shell casings over here, 3840s, crag, uh, an old top to a can, electrical, old copper electrical stuff. No ring yet. That was two of the hay barns that were moved up from the depot farm. And then this was a couple years ago, this was this barn, 
what was still left of it. Okay. And then uh, there was a neighbor come and stole a bunch of the, because it was all cedar, right? Oh, all yeah. Cedar yeah, yeah. Now, this was one of the ones that you can see in the, the Chisholm history book. Yes. That was one of the barns. And okay. it was just out beyond that tree line there. Okay. And the roof collapsed on it um, uh, two years ago, two years ago. And it was just, it was too much to, to save the building at that point. Yeah. And otherwise, it was very structurally sound up to that point, eh? Because of the top, top mal beams up here, they, they had rotted. And so when the roof pushed in, it just pushed, okay, pushed yeah. everything out. And, um, but anyways, it was, uh, like, th these, these buildings were be before a lot of Chisholm was developed. Like, right. They, they were of that age, you know. And they, they moved those Yes, they, here. Moved, they moved all those buildings from across the creek. Ha, that back. would be a job and a half. <laughs> but back then, neighbors helped each other. Yeah. Well, that's true, yes. You know? Yeah, it was a different era, for sure. Yeah, 100%. So Doug was telling me that his, uh, so it would have been my, my great, Jay and Gladys, who were they to you? My yeah. great aunt and uncle. Great aunt and uncle. And yeah. they got this property, 600-acre depot farm? Yeah, the, the Booth Depot Farm. And what year was that that they got the farm? It was roughly. in the Depression era. Okay. When when they came on this. And then this farm. all of these buildings were moved after that fact. Yes. Okay, that's cool. That's cool history right there, guys. <laughs> yeah. This is Doug. He's a good guy to know. He's a bit of a historian himself, I believe. Yeah, I think all that. Yeah. So, <laughs> and we're going to see if we can help Doug today, but we're going to get a little bit of history first. So, we're sitting. What year was this farmhouse that we're sitting in built? It was the same same time in the late thirties that, okay. that they built the house. And you can see up here, it's got all the hardwood yeah. ceiling, and that would have been taken out of one of the old barns. Yeah. Doug was saying. So, yeah, I mean, this is old. this is classic. Uh, you know, nineteen thirty ish farmhouse <laughs> yeah big time so i spent the morning talking with doug and we have more in common than just the history stuff he also has a little bit of paranormal side to him and he's got a picture here he likes to go to all the old places and takes pictures of the old barns and buildings and one of the images we'll show you this i'll take a picture of it as well uh but he got this picture and there's this cool mist in this building and uh unexplained he wasn't smoking he wasn't his breath yada yada i'll take a, a picture of this and show you guys it's cool though so you probably will see Doug on the channel again at some point because he likes a lot of the stuff we like. And so this here is the house that the picture of the mist came out of. And there's actually, uh, you said in one of the history books, there's a picture taken that exact same angle in the... Chisholm, one of the Chisholm history books. Yeah. With the family in a cutter out front, you said. Okay, I'll yeah. see if I can find that as well, and I'll show you guys that as well. All right, so a couple hours out here in the blistering heat, you can see, and uh, there is a lot more stuff here than we thought. So we did, we dug some around the side of the house too, but there's just some of the some of the casings, and there's there's a lot more in there. We're gonna have to come back, I think, if we're gonna find this ring. So uh, a big, huge thanks to Doug for checking out the channel and giving me a call. We, we definitely will come back and try to help him out. Thank you so much. So that was the most amazing encounter I've had with a fan of the channel because Doug is into so many things that I'm into. You know, the history, the metal detecting, the paranormal, photography. Uh, he is a historian in his own right. He knows all of the family names out here. He knows my wife's family name, some of the history. Uh, for a young guy, he has an old soul. I can tell that right away. He just has interests way beyond his years. And I think you guys are gonna see him on the channel uh, a little bit more because him and I talked about not only doing some metal detecting stuff but possibly going out and doing some uh, paranormal uh, research and you know just checking out some of these really old places he was telling me about uh, you know a couple of places where guys had died you know on a bridge a decapitation uh, when a tractor rolled over on a guy and he just knows a ton of stuff about the paranormal he does uh, witching stuff uh, he's just a super fascinating guy so uh, we're going to see more of Doug on this channel. 